everybody and welcome to lesson two of the Moon Mama session. This lesson, your assignment, is to work out. But not just any workout. I want you working out with me at unicornwellness.studio, but we'll get into the particulars of that towards the end of things. The assignment this week is to work out in order to get your muscles, ligaments, tendons, and bones in alignment with your breath, and to give a clean sweep to your energetic body, okay? In order to align ourselves better and more expanded, and you go, what does that mean? With the frequency of these moon cycles, okay? So this assignment is meant to really anchor your intentions from lesson one into the physical plane here in lesson two, which is necessary. If you haven't watched lesson one yet, you can find it on my YouTube channel and go back and watch it. That one deals with our new moon rituals and how to set an intention and how to set your goal in the first place. But here in lesson two, we're really looking at, okay, I have an intention, I have a goal. And intentions and goals are really thoughts and feelings, right? Or they're words, but this is all the element of air, okay? And so this is really like the heart of manifestation is that if you have a vibration that's way out here, magic, 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 right? And you meditate, 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 okay? And you're up in your vibration constantly. This is all beautiful and we're aiming at that for sure as unicorns in the world, but you cannot bring anything into real tangible manifestation here in the 3D concrete world until you get grounded, okay? So this is the misconception as far as spiritualists um, and manifestation in general, that it's all work out here, it's all the element of air. Mm -mm. You have to get all of the elements to work together, right? Earth, air, water, and fire. So the element of grounding would be the element of earth, and that has very much to do with about being embodied in your physical body, okay? So we're working with all four elements as we work through these four weeks, number one, as we work through these four lessons, okay? that the goal is to have body, mind, and spirit and energetic frequency in alignment in order to evolve, in order to heal, in order to bring things into manifestation, okay? So a workout, as strange as it sounds, is one of the most magical ways to, one, balance your frequencies, two, root your intentions in this physical plane, right? And three, really develop harmony in your body and soul. So that's the, really the first point I wanna to go to today as we talk about workouts, right? And so this is your assignment for the week. And like I said, we'll get to the particulars of the assignment towards the end. But why a workout? What kind of workout? Why does that matter? And how does this all sift together and work together? This lesson is the heart of what I teach and it is the heart of unicornwellness.studio. So here we go. I have notes to not get too scattered as we go. One, we all know that we're a spiritual being having a physical experience, right? And we all go, we're not just the physical body. Okay, that's great. And we also, as spiritual seekers, right, truth finders, unicorns, light workers in the world, we tend to go, the physical's a little bit imaginary and that's the matrix and we actually don't have to do all of our work there. We're supposed to do it all in the ethers with divine spirit out here in the element of air. And that's a misconception, okay? So we are a spiritual being having a physical experience. But the interesting thing is, is that our soul, our spirit, doesn't actually know the difference between itself and our physical body. And you kind of go, what, right? Because we know we're more than just this physical body. But as spiritualists, we've kind of actually gone the opposite direction. So we're not actually always dealing with the physical, okay? So the physical body is heaven on earth. This is the vessel. This is the holder of our soul right? And so there is some insult to that already because we're having infinite expansive energy like shoved into a physical body and you go, that's limiting and it's kind of yuck, like, oh, but we know that we're incarnated in this physical plane because this is the gauntlet. This is the, where lessons are learned. This is where we expand. This is where we evolve. This is where we level up, right? So you have to bring that awareness into the physical body and know that the better you treat it, number one, 
the more in harmony and the more integrated your soul is with this physical body. So when you're beating your body up, when you're ignoring it, when you're treating it poorly and you're not using it and tending to it in a constructive way, it's insulting to the soul and that lowers the frequency and vibration already of your own magic and that lowers the capacity to manifest and to make magic happen. So a workout is unbelievably powerful when it's thoughtful and loving and kind and intelligent and in how it's working the energies and this dual space of physical and spiritual, emotional and energetic, right? So it's really powerful to be able to be in movement with the frequencies of something bigger than yourself, okay? So the cosmic set point for our souls and our body is that of love and healing, right? We probably agree to that, but we have to reteach our physical bodies. We have to get our physical vessel to remember that frequency of love and healing. And that happens powerfully through movement. Again, because we're a physical body, this is how we're built. We are built to move. Okay. And it's not optional. It's not like, Oh, all the fitness and the health geeks. Yeah. Great. You guys, I just don't dig it. Well, you probably don't really dig taking the time out to brush your teeth either, but we do it because we know they need a clean sweep. We know there's bacteria that lives in there, that it's a health issue that we need to do that constant clean out. Well, the body requires that constant clean out also. So if you look at the body from this perspective of a traditional Chinese medicine, right? Of Reiki healing, of Qigong and Tai Chi, all of these practices know that energies, we're carrying them all the time. We're interacting with each other even now, which is why I've brought this format into video because I wanted to interact with you more on our energetic level, right? And so as we interact with each other, we're passing energies, we're giving them off, we're getting dumped on sometimes, and it's like, what's in there? And we need to take the time to give our physical vessel the home and the protective space of our soul an energetic clean sweep daily, okay? We'll get to that whether it's daily or not here in a minute, but think of it as your workout getting on the mat with me as a time that you just take that little broom and you sweep the muck out because from a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, when you have stagnant energies build up in the body, this is going to create blockages and then eventually it could come out in an illness or disease. We're never going to escape all illness or all disease. That's part of our functional life, right? We're an open system in this physical plane, but the idea and the goal is to have way fewer and way less of those things than more often, right? Every illness or every sickness is an opportunity to heal because it's pointing the way to something that's been blocked or energetically become so stagnant. Now it's producing itself in the physical realm. So a workout is not only powerful in the physical realm. We are here. We have to respect that, but it's unbelievably power in the energetic field. So when people are getting acupuncture and Reiki treatments or practicing Tai Chi or Qigong, but they're not really aware of themselves in their workout space, right? This is totally different. And remember that all movement patterns have something different that they give to the body. They're all relevant, right? But perhaps none of those things speak to your body or speak to you as they are. And you're looking for something a little bit more tangible, a little bit more grounded, right? So we are a spiritual being when you work in harmony with the body rather than against it. So if you think of a workout typically as it beating your body up, right? We live in a very fitness oriented perspective and culture. And you start to move that into wellness and self care. That looks a whole lot different. And the wellness and self care lens says, if I go thoughtfully, if I go in small increments, if I move in respect to my body and listen to what my body's capable of doing and practice with consistency, then I heal. Then I remember my original frequency of love and my original frequency of thriving, right? And vitality. This is the goal. So, I have taught movement for over 20 years and this has always been my goal is to have you doing less as a workout, 
but reaping more of the healing benefits of it that turn into tangible physical results because we want those. We are human. So being in this human incarnation is really about balancing humanity with divinity. It's not one or the other. So if we're talking about getting in alignment with the moon cycles, we're trying to align more with our divine energies, right? Mama moon herself. But we can't throw away and disregard that we are a 3D incarnation right now. And we have to deal with both things. So a physical body actually really loves to move because that's what it's built to do. And going in through that lens and that practice allows not only this beautiful manifestation of balanced energies, expanded energies, more magical energies, healed energies, but because it's in the tangible embodiment, it gets you grounded and rooted. So back to intention setting. Great, I set an intention. It's the air element. It's out here in the ethers. I set it in words. I wrote it down. But now what? Now you gotta feel it in your body. Now you've got to be connected in the physical plane. And or it's like it's almost like drawing down <laughs> magic out of the ethers, right? And then getting it like mm, root anchored. Then you've got this main line, right? And so the root chakra, that base chakra, all important pieces. Alright? So how do we do that? So now we know the assignment, we know the lesson, like we're gonna work out, we're gonna work out with Tandy, that's with me, that's what we're gonna do. Um, but how do you do that? So what does that look like? How is that different than any other workout? Why can't I just do the workout I wanna do, or that I was doing? <laughs> well, if you're members at unicornwellness.studio, you can keep doing what you were doing, just go press play. Um, but if you haven't heard all of this information before, one, so we just talked about energy as a clean sweep. I am really big on thinking about your movement and getting on the mat and doing your workout as an energetic clean sweep. Like forget for five seconds that you want your booty to lift a little bit, that you'd love more tone in your triceps and a little more shaped your arms. Those are all wonderful things. And you wanna be stronger, you want your back not to hurt when you pick up your groceries. And they will all happen. But really focus on it being like, imagine that little broom going through the negative energies in your brain and in your body and all those stuck mucky parts. Half of the reason that we feel so cranky in our bodies is because we, when we sit too much, right? And we're texting and we're typing. Um, but because we're not moving enough, we are built to move. And when you move, right? It takes that synovial fluid and those joints get all kind of juiced and yummy again. So part of this energetic clean sweep is simply a requirement of having a physical body. It's not optional. And this isn't just again for the fitness geeks and for the fitness advocates and like, yeah, you don't have to be like super sporty spice, right? I don't even know that she was that, that sporty, but you get what I'm saying. So think of it, one, as movement in your workout, more of the energetic clean sweep. So if you've been with me for years, and I mean years, like some of you all have come from the like studio 15 years ago to my online studio for the last five years, start really looking at that perspective because what everybody says for certain is like, I just feel better when I'm done. I am clear and more focused, right? These are the stress benefits, but it's, not so mundane as that. These are the energetic frequency benefits of it. So part of the way that we are going to, through our workouts, move closer into the cycles of the moon and in order to get our intentions from just an idea into this physical plane is going to be by approaching our movement patterns in our workout from the energetic perspective. I'm cleaning out, I'm sweeping today. I did my sweep today, so I'm good. Ain't nothing gonna get stuck, I can move forward. I can make progress, okay? The second one is really where I love, right? Okay, functionally, how are we really gonna do this? Like, great, it all sounds like magic, okay? And so then you go, moon mamas, of course we're practicing yoga. And I'm totally mocking, right? Hold up, we are, but with a little bit of a different spin to it. So my background and my calling card and the heartbeat of what I teach from a movement pattern is Pilates. And everybody goes, it's not as magical as yoga. I don't know about that, we're gonna discuss that. So from a functional perspective, when you get on the mat with me and when you work out with me, it's always going to originally come from a Pilates lens. Why? Because I have respect for this 3D physical plane. I do 3D real well, right? So Pilates is based 
in physical therapy. It was created as physical therapy originally. So it inherently has a healing component. It works in honor of the body, which is what I find so beautiful about it. So we're working from an alignment perspective of the bones. Then that allows the muscles to hang, align, and lay in their most bestest space so that they function more properly, okay? It also has a complete focus on a core contraction. So in, from a Pilates perspective, from the Pilates lens of movement and pattern training, you will always work from alignment first. Make sure all the bones are in the places or as close to that anatomical positioning as possible, which allows for your muscles, ligaments, tendons, and fascia to lay better, closest to their anatomical positioning as possible, because this is the highest efficiency, but always with the core contraction before movement occurs. So this protects the body, this allows old injuries to heal, and this prevents new injuries from happening. You go, okay, that's cool and super concrete. I get it from a movement perspective, but it's not very magical, okay? You have that body breath connection. Moving breath in a very focused and mindful way is always magical in the body. Two, Pilates method at its classical roots, right, is always about core contraction. Here's where it starts to get magical, okay? So you want to start now, bridge some thinking to, away from the functional. It's super functional and it is awesomely grounding. So we love it. We need the grounding efforts in order to bring intentions into this physical 3D plane. So when you get grounded, and if you're giving this core contraction every single time, so here, take a breath. Sit up as tall as you can, or stand as tall as you can, wherever you are. Inhale to scoop your belly button up underneath the rib cage, and exhale to hold it there high and tight. So this is a core contraction, but it brings along the pelvic floor. So we're talking about your root and your base chakra, and then it's really honing in and completely focusing in on your solar plexus chakra. Okay, so if you can hang on to that contraction, you're welcome to, otherwise you can let it go now, okay? So the solar plexus chakra is the seat and the heart of manifestation, right? This is confidence. This is stepping into your true place in the sun. This is feeling empowered and secure in your own body. From, you know, these wellness perspective, this is the capacity to digest emotionally. So those of us with gut issues or, um, you know, IBS or any kind of intestinal stuff, typically we're high impasse because we have trouble digesting everybody else's emotions. And a lot of times it's other people's stuff, not ours, that gets stuck there. But when you're constructively and consistently working to strengthen your core, we're working towards balance. What can we deflect that's not ours? What can we hold space for because we want to love and support? And what's ours that we need to work through, sift through and flush out? Okay, so Pilates, I mean, is magic to me if you're thinking and understanding and rooted in the right perspective of it, right? So then the other side to that. So we've, we've talked about Pilates being, you know, based in physical therapy, it's inherently kind and supportive and healing to the body. And we want to remind the body of its love and healing frequency, our original birthright, our spiritual set point. But incarnation and 3D plane, man, we got all kinds of layers to peel off to get back to our magical home base. And Pilates really does this in a very functional, very analytical, very, you know, it's more of a left brain perspective, honestly, side of things. But this is what people need. This is what you all need. Because as reality based as we are, we're not very grounded and we're completely disembodied from ourselves. So the Pilates method really brings you into your body, asks you to do tiny connections and tiny work to really focus on the quality of movement rather than the quantity of movement, okay? So then the other side of that is yoga. Isn't yoga just, that's the spiritual practice, that's what you should be doing. Anybody said should, then we're out of the gate already, right? Like, meh, loss. I am an avid yogi for over 10 years, right? I love yoga and it's beautiful, but they do different things. Pilates and yoga do different things. So everybody thinks that, you know, if I need a mindful practice and I want to be more magical, then I need to be doing yoga. 
Well, what you need to be doing is a practice that makes sense, that balances the body, that generates equal length and strength, equal grounding and energetic expansion. And after 20 some years in the fitness industry and in the wellness industry, what I see is so much yoga being taught in really poor alignment, in a non-anchored space and a really ungrounded way. So there's so many layers. This is a whole nother lesson in and of itself. And we'll try not to go too far down the rabbit hole with it. But yoga is originally <laughs> A spiritual practice. The asanas and the movement were really made to be a distraction for the mind as you get connected to your spiritual practice. Okay, so that's kind of like the, the tiny side note that we're going to do today. That the heart of a yogic practice isn't actually about the movement at all. It's simply what we've adopted. Yoga has become big business and there's a lot of instructors that have just been churned out for the movement pattern of it but with no understanding of really how to yoke and connect the spirit and the physical body together, okay? When you get into yoga as a practice, originally it comes from an Eastern philosophy. That Eastern philosophy lends itself to a movement pattern that in our culture, we can't even approach, okay? So when you go into a yoga practice thinking, I'm gonna be more spiritual, I'm gonna become more mobile, I'm, I'm gonna do this, our bodies are so out of alignment that we can't even approach that work yet, which is why Pilates, get the body in alignment, take care of it, respect it, understand it, get connected to it, then open it up into yoga. So whereas Pilates is very left brain, very grounding, very, um, it's very coronal plane, right? You get into yoga and it becomes very, expansive. It tends to be more about mobility than stability. And depending on who your teacher, and there are wonderful ones out there, or what school of yoga you practice, there's very little attention to core contraction or alignment. And so yoga on a broad spectrum, you can really end up hanging in the joints because you don't have the strength to be doing what you're doing. You don't have the access of mobility to be doing what you're doing. You're forcing your body into places and spaces. It shouldn't be just yet. We'll get you there, but not yet. So yoga tends to be on the expansive mobility scale. It will hang in the joints and really create a lot of problems for you if you don't know how to support in your core, if you don't have the stability and alignment awareness, right? So I always say that Pilates and yoga are the perfect sister formats. When you get one, Pilates can be applied to any other fitness format. That's the beauty of it. And yoga has this magic and this expansion to it. But it's rooted in, a, in an Eastern structure where they squat to eat, to use the restroom. Their hips are much more open and much healthier than ours in a Western culture. And so we can do all this yoga practice, but when we're doing both, then we've really got the synthesis of humanity and divinity, right? Grounding and analytics with the expansion and the magic and the, and the spiritual component. So from yoga, you know, this is where we get the chakras and the energy alignment and this philosophy comes into play. So it really is magical when you can get them to connect and allow the magic to be balanced and to brew. So in my experience, personally and as a coach and trainer in the industry for over 20 years, Pilates on its own is like a do no harm thing and really beautiful. Yoga on its own can really, it can put a lot of pressure on things, especially in the age of Instagram to be doing fancy tricks or to never make progress in the body because you're not connected to the alignment of things or how to support the movement of it. So again, I'm super big on doing both together because it's beautiful. So when you work out with me, part of this lesson, right, is to be looking at these things in a combined manner and go, oh, that generates magic in my body, but energetically it's generating magic because it's grounding you and expanding you at the same time. Such magic, I love it. Um, Okay, so on to the next piece. Like, how does a workout actually connect me deeper to the cycles of the moon? How are we gonna do this? Um, 
The third one is that 30 minute increments. Okay, so this is one of those things that everybody goes, oh, it's a 30 minute workout. Yeah, but there's a reason to it. So when you keep a movement pattern to 30 minutes at a time and no longer than that, a couple of really big, wonderful things happen. One, as a functional and efficient practice, you are being really clear about the allotment of time, doing things in small increments that allows you to do it more consistently. That way you don't blow out your system, you don't get bored, you haven't done too much up front, and your actual habit of getting on the mat, of working out with me, because all of the workouts with me are in that 30 minute time frame. Okay, some are 28, some might be 34 minutes, but they're 30 minute workouts, right? So it also templates you for long-term success because you're taking things in bite-sized chunks. Life is busy and messy and bless you if you have an hour, an hour and a half to go work out, more days than not in your week. I don't have that kind of time. I've got children, I've got a business, I've got teaching. I'd like to do nothing sometimes and rest, right? So 30 minutes makes it really digestible totally good for the long term. This is about the long game. I don't teach just for 30, 60, 90 days. You got to start somewhere and you need to have benchmarks, but this is a lifetime of magic making. And this is a lifetime of tending to the physical vessel. And this is a lifetime of helping your soul and your physical plane integrate more easily with each other. So 30 minutes allows that to happen in a really consistent manner. Other things that 30 minutes does. 30 minute time frame does allow for long-term results. Again, because you're going slow and steady and you're not burning yourself out. But the most interesting scientific thing that it does is it never triggers stress hormones, okay? So this is a deeper lesson in and of itself. But when you work out, working out is stress on the body. Like you are putting stress on the body, that's the point, okay? Is that you stress the system to a place constructively to where it then requires rest to integrate and change, to get stronger, to create more mobility, right? So when you don't hit this 30 minute mark, you can make all these constructive changes of creating strength, of creating more mobility and flexibility, of healing and preventing injuries in that 30 minute time frame. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't hit to where you pump cortisol. Okay, so this is why so many people work out and in specific, they do all this cardio and their bodies never change. Why are you wasting your time? Stop it. Like if you're investing time in working out and movement, you should be getting some results and some rewards for it. So what happened to us as a culture is that we're go, 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 do, do, do. Toxic masculinity and willpower, right? And that, your body goes, well, well, please stop. And it freaks out, it stresses out and then it holds on to fat, then it won't release fat, then it's not building muscle in the same way, okay? So by keeping to a 30 minute increment, it will produce more results in your body for you because it's not hitting your stress hormones, okay? So the extra incentive to that is for any of us with autoimmune disorders and diseases, and I mean any autoimmune issue. I'm talking celiac, I'm talking psoriasis, I'm talking eczema, I'm talking lupus, you know, all of these things fall into the autoimmune category. I have celiac, I had a thyroid removal years ago, and I have IBS, technically. So when you keep to the 30 minute mark, it does not trigger the stress hormones I just talked about. That allows us to heal and not trigger our autoimmune disorders. So we know, those of us with autoimmune issues, that stress is like, that's, that's the kicker because we'll have a flare up or a relapse and we don't know if that's gonna last for 24 hours or if it's gonna be four weeks before we feel better. So these workouts, because I'm your teacher, <laughs> are inherently built to support autoimmune bodies in this unbelievably magical way of getting upswing that you've never had before because we tend to stay away from workouts because when we do workouts, we're not sure if it's gonna be good for us or not, or we're gonna be like messing with it for forever, okay? So, we're gonna look at our workouts as an energetic sweep, right? We're gonna practice a combination of Pilates and yoga because it is the most magical to get us aligned with the moon, right? And then, 
We're gonna keep to this 30 minute marker with me on the mat because it's the smartest way to get results and it's really easy and efficient for your life as well. It makes sense. The minute I stopped going to other people's classes and only doing my own work, I swear to goodness my life started to unfold in the most beautiful way. And I look back and I go, ooh, yeah, mm-hmm. Intention setting, getting grounded in yourself, doing your own damn thing, and really keeping to that 30 minute mark is unbelievably powerful. Okay, so the next piece. So here we go. I want you all to work out with me at unicornwellness.studio. For the members who are watching this video, you all know the deal. Go to the site, log in, press play. I want you there four to seven times a week because that is the highest rate of success and consistency when we're looking at these 30 minute workouts. If you're brand new and you're not a member, you're like four times a week, that sounds insane. I'm doing nothing. It's fine, better is better. Get your booty on that damn mat at least twice a week and you're making upswing already. Just set the pattern of rolling out your mat and pressing play on the side, okay? If you are not currently a member of unicornwellness.studio, then I invite you to come and activate your guest membership for 30 days free on the site, okay? You're gonna use the promo code 12 moon uw at checkout and it's below in the descriptions as well so you don't have to write it down when you use that code at checkout it's going to zero out your cart and you have a completely free 30-day guest membership if being a unicorn being on the mat just does not seem magical to you and it's totally not your jam that's fine you can cancel at any time it's two button clicks from the site and it is really simple all right if you love it and you understand the value of an energetic clean sweep of healing your body of returning yourself to the frequency of love of self-care which is really a practice of self-love and how that generates unbelievable magic in your life and you stay Day 31 will begin your paid membership and it's $32 a month. So every membership on the site, you get access to my workouts. I'll give a little talk through through those. The monthly guided meditation and three specific tarot readings only available to members for the new moon, the full moon, and the month at large. It also has my full 87 page food reset. So those with autoimmune issues, you need to go download that now, okay? And then you also have access to the private Facebook groups and the monthly magazine. So there's all kinds of stuff, right? So a couple other little bits about working out with me on the site. Every single workout on unicornwellness.studio is attuned and written by me in a macro and micro cycle in accordance to the moon cycles and the current astrology. So if you really want to know how a workout's going to attune you to a frequency, this is how. I am looking at the weather forecast, right, the astrological forecast, and going, what is that going to mean for our psyche, for our mental, physical, emotional, and us as a collective? How do we need to move in order to balance those energies? That's what I'm bringing to you on the map, okay? So every month at the new moon is our constructive rest week because the new moon asks us to go quiet and to rest and receive and restore. Those workouts, they're full stretches. So you have two 30 minute stretch series back to back on the site that you'll be using in those six days near the new moon. At the full moon every month, that's the time when we have amped up energy and we're going to go into that in lesson three. And so we are asking ourselves to give more push and more drive in that period of time than at any other time in the month. And then our other two weeks during the month, are, they're pretty medium effort, right? But I am always macro micro cycling within these four week cycles from new moon to new moon so that you are constantly moving in harmony, not only with your own physical body, but with the frequency of the cosmos. Really exciting and really powerful, okay? So I hope you love this lesson. Um, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you get the little alerts um, every time I put a new one up. This year, there's gonna be a session every four weeks, so you're getting a lesson every single which is super exciting, okay? Um, if you have any questions about anything, you can always ask, you can always find me. And what I'd love to hear you all answer in the comments below is what did you hear in this lesson 
that made you think about movement or workout in a way you've never really considered it before, okay? So off you go to get on the mat at unicornwellness.studio to press play on the workouts over there, hopefully four to seven times a week, in particular this week, but also for the next three weeks as we finish out this Moon Mama session. I love you all very much, and I will see you next time.